Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Parmigiani Fleurier Oval Pantograph in 18 karat red gold. You can see this pocket watch inspired contemporary independent horology timepiece and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this oval pantograph. Now you can see on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. The watch is large, but it's shaped, almost perfectly shaped, to fit a smaller wrist. Granted, this is a watch that is loud and proud. And if you have a huge wrist and you prefer a larger style, make no mistake, it reads as a big watch, but it wears as a compact watch. The timepiece is reasonably trim across the broad of the case at 38 millimeters from nine to three, not inclusive of the crown. And it's not thick. The timepiece is 12.8 millimeters thick, only fractionally more than a Rolex Submariner. If you can wear that with a suit, you can wear this with a suit. And in fact, the slope to the case flank and the curvature of the bezel means that it's easy to wear this one underneath a tight sleeve or dress cuff. But make no mistake, it dresses down just as well as it dresses up. From lug to lug, it's 51.5 millimeters, but it's the camber of the case and the shape of the lugs that really defines the fit of this watch. You can see each individual lug has been soldered on separately with the evidence of soldering removed by hand. This is the highest quality fashion in which you can make a case, and Parmigiani makes its case by sparing no expense. Expense. The teardrop profile of these lugs, which separate the profile of the case band from the ergonomic interface, they're not just distinctive, they make the watch fit on a wrist such that I believe you could wear this watch securely on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. A bit of an ergonomic miracle. You'll also note how high drilled they are and that there's a sort of countersink in the flank of the case, a little garage into which the strap is recessed to create a highly integrated look and again draw the pivot points of the strap closer to center so it wears better on a small wrist. Also note the graceful compound curve of the case and the bezel from this angle. It's absolutely spectacular. This is a watch that's just too complex to contain within a five to seven minute video, but I will do my best. Now the strap on the timepiece is a very dark navy blue to match the accents of the dial. It is minimally bolstered with rectangular scale alligator leather, folded edges, and a monotone stitch on the underside, incredibly supple calfskin. And yes, this is one of the famous Parmigiani Hermes straps. It feels like absolute butter and it looks like solid gold. Now you'll note that the clasp is quite literally solid gold, a rich and sumptuous appointment for this deluxe complication of sorts. You can see that it features all high polished interior with satin finish on its underside and a twin trigger system that uses one of the swing arms as the springs for the trigger. Very secure when closed. It's beautiful to look at and it works beautifully. You'll also note the profile of the lugs recapitulated in the profile of the buckle. This is a company that does design just as well as it does execution with no detail overlooked. You can see the camber of the sapphire and the camber of the case. You'll also note from the rear that there is a camber to the underlying sapphire such that it too curves around the wrist. Expensive to execute, but once again, did I mention no detail is overlooked? Look at the inner bezel. Look at the interior of the bezel, mirror polished to visually expand the dial when viewed off axis. It's almost like being in a restaurant where opposing mirrors create the illusion of a bigger space. It does that here. And the dial itself, quite frankly, doesn't need, look at that reflection, is that gorgeous? It doesn't need any help. Beautifully lacquered with blue accents. It's a perfect match for the pantograph style hands. Note the capping of the hands at center. The watch is inspired fundamentally by a vintage Varden and Stedman retailed English pocket watch that incorporated this exact same extensible hand system. And thus comes the form of the hands, the concept of the watch, and the polished cap at center. And this is something that has to be seen. It can't be explained. The hands extend and retract as they trace the arc of the dial. Like a pantograph machine, and AP fans might recognize that term as a pantograph is the machine used to duplicate in miniature, 
the template of the tapisserie dial of the Royal Oak, a pantograph essentially is a tracing machine, and that's exactly what we have here. Now it also features a power reserve scale at 12 o'clock for its eight-day autonomy between windings. Yes, that's right, eight days of power reserve, and it winds quickly. It's not like those massive reserve watches that you have to wind for almost as long as the reserve itself. This charges quickly for instant gratification. A date at six o'clock features a quick set function for rapid cycling. On the reverse, a site one could argue is even more compelling than the dial, and that's quite a statement. This is the caliber PF111. Now, it is a 28 joule manual wind, eight day power reserve, three hertz beat rate, truly hand finished high horology piece. And I can only point out some of the highlights because there are simply too many to catalog in this video. Note eight separate instances of hand finished interior angles. This is exceptional. Most High horology houses will avoid featuring even one interior angle because they are so difficult to finish. Parmigiani struts its stuff here with no fewer than eight plus mirrored enclage hand laid, rounded, and immaculate on the edge of every bridge as well as within all of the jewel sinks. All screw heads optically polished, poly noir no less, with their slots chamfered. You'll note the access point over the barrel you can just see the ghosted outline of that separate bridge. It's so precisely fit that you almost have to look twice to see it. You almost need a loop to see it, and it visually creates the appearance of an integrated bridge over the expanse of the top of the movement, rather than a partitioned bridge. Again, you can just barely see the seam line. The detailing is that subtle. The assembly is that good. Beautiful black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism with a rich, and very closely overlapped perlage engine turning across the base plate. The Cote de Genève are the real deal. Rich, striated, and textured. Not executed mechanically, executed with the guidance of a hand, not the mind of a machine. And finally, a Breguet overcoil hairspring for resistance to positional or gravitationally induced timing deviation. A watch that is intellectually and artistically beautiful, rare and special. This is the Parmigiani Fleurier Oval Pantograph.